Hi folks, welcome to our JM pack. No point in beating about the bush. On 28th of March, we had the final outcome of Sam Bankman Freed's trial, his sentencing. The lowdown is that he's been sentenced to 25 years in prison and had a forfeit order of $11 billion of assets imposed. What was his response? Well, we heard from his lawyers who said that they would appeal the sentence. Well, of course they would. Mind you, if Sam's now $11 billion lighter in the pocket, then maybe they'll wonder how he'll be able to pay them. Perhaps he's got a dollar or two squirrelled away somewhere. We also heard from his parents, who said that they were heartbroken and will continue to fight for our son. As a reminder, Sam Bankman-Fried was convicted of fraud and conspiracy to launder money in late 2023. Seven counts were brought against him and the jury found him guilty on all counts after only four hours of deliberation. Apparently for the sentencing, he was in court in his prison garb and instead of the trimmed hair he had maintained in front of the jury, he'd grown it out to the mess he was known for during his crypto heyday. Words from the judge as he passed the sentence were very damning. Kaplan said during the process, Sam Bankman-Fried was a calculating math genius who sought power and influence while knowingly committing wrongdoing. And he knew it was wrong. He knew it was criminal. And there was never a word of remorse for his crimes. Sam Bankman-Fried has apologised for, in his words, a series of bad decisions. But this sort of rhetoric came back to haunt him, as had he taken some responsibility and admitted some wrongdoing, then this would have been a mitigating factor. Sam had said in advance of the sentencing in court that he knew a lot of people felt really let down and I'm sorry about all that, I'm sorry about what happened at every stage. To me, for what it's worth, this is a mealy-mouthed apology and doesn't really hint at any element of responsibility. After all, any criminal is going to be sorry about what happened at every stage during the crime they've just been sentenced for, as without those stages they may well not have been sitting in the court at all. What about the people he stole from, and the abuse of his customers' own dollars to fund his own lavish lifestyle? Any comment on that at all was sadly lacking. Sam was actually facing over 110 years in total if all the individual counts were aggregated, but the judge has discretion to view these as part and parcel of the same endeavour. Sam's evasive testimony in the court also came back to haunt him. In the words of Kaplan, he was evasive and hair-splitting whilst he lied about his conduct, and I've never seen a performance quite like that. Although the maximum sentence could have been 110 years, the prosecutors were actually looking for around 40 to 50 years. Their points were that he'd shown a lack of remorse for his crimes and lived a life of unmatched greed and hubris. They wanted his sentence to send an important message, essentially a deterrent to others, as well as FBF himself. His own lawyers, on the other hand, were looking for six and a half years for his sentence, pointing to the non-violent nature of the crimes and Sam's mental health issues, together with the fact that it appears customers were going to receive at least part of their losses back via the insolvency and bankrupt procedures. Sentence him to hard work and give it all away, his lawyers said. Funnily enough, if you take the prosecutor's stance of around 45 years and the defence's stance of 6.5 years, add them together and take the average, you end up, give or take, with the actual sentence handed down of 25 years. OK, I, I know that's not how things work. Don't hang me for it. It's just an observation. However, Kaplan made it clear just what his stance was as he made the comment that there is a risk that this man will be in a position to do something very bad in the future and it's not a trivial risk. Not a trivial risk at all. In respect of the forfeit of $11 billion, Sam's already repaid some, for example the $600 million of shares in Robin Hood that were sold last year. Mind you, when I say Sam's repaid some, I should probably rephrase that and say that they were taken from him, kicking and screaming, that he should hold on to them as they were his. He's not said much either about his former top-tier colleagues, Ellison and Wang, who testified against him, they all built something really beautiful. They threw themselves into it, and then I threw it all away. It haunts me every day. Now, I'm not quite sure what to make of those comments. An element of remorse? Mm, perhaps. One modicum of relief for Sam Bankman-Fried is that Kaplan said he wouldn't recommend a maximum security prison because 
Sam Bankman-Fried didn't pose a threat of violence, and I guess that's probably true. A question I have now is whether the prosecutions have ended and the prosecution's job has been done. For example, Sam Bankman-Fried's colleagues, the senior execs at least, have pled guilty under the deal arrangements. The big gap I do see at the moment is that Sam Bankman-Fried's parents haven't seen charges themselves. They, remember, benefited significantly from their associations with their son and his lead of FTX. Both are lawyers in their own rights, his mother Barbara, an expert in ethics, would you believe? They allegedly have had the benefit of a gifted Bahamian mansion, which was about $16 million in value, and other expensed luxuries and cash whilst Sam was at the helm. I wait and see what happens now with bated breath. Bye for now.